Hello everyone, it's William again, and it's time for part two of this Great Awakening story. Um, and this is where it starts to get interesting. But before we do that, I want to eat um, graham mushrooms and read some Wallace Stevens. I figured everyone would be, you know, that would get them ready for this. Um, so, where I left off, there was a tall being that I could see the outline of in my room um, and I could see it clearly and it moved kind of strange almost like it was double jointed and I thought of it as my guardian angel and the reason that I say it that way is because these experiences could get were getting scary you know especially the meditations and things I was really unaware of and I was doing I had found Michael things um, I had been out in the woods one day, and something was communicating with me. Um, said its name was Michael. Um, I even asked it to show itself, and I saw, literally, I wouldn't have believed, I would have just said, oh, that's my imagination. But I saw it move. Um, it was clear, but whatever it was, I physically saw it. Now you might ask, well, how do you know these things that you're talking to? Um, or not just your imagination, because that's a good question. And I even thought that uh, about it myself. Like, oh, I'm, my, my mind just doing that. And how I can d uh, discern now is that it answers very quickly. When I, if I had, had wanted to have a conversation with myself right now, I would have to think of answers. Like, there would be a pause. Um, the communication with other beings, it's very quickly. You don't have time to think of it. And if you catch yourself trying to manipulate it, stop and uh, clear and try again. Um, but, and the answers aren't things you would think of, you know. You're, you're not looking for something that's going to make you happy or something that you want to hear. Um, you have to be open to whatever's coming your way. And this entity, Michael, uh, I assumed was an angel. And as things were picking up, uh, I thought that it was necessary to have this protection. Um, one of the things that started happening was what I considered mirroring. Now, this may not have been mirroring or uh, reflections of how I felt inside, but what it did do for me either way was it had me paying attention more to what I was thinking and feeling. Um, as humans, you know, we go about our day, we have all these thoughts and all these things going on. Most people have no idea what's going on in the background or how it might motivate or affect your behaviors or how you respond. Um, but I was having these uh, aggressive instances, um, chasing the drones or playing with the drones. Uh, one night this uh, man was walking very quickly towards me down a long sidewalk with the hand in the back of his pants, you know the posturing of, of what you would think if someone has a pistol. And it was very clear to me that I had to remain strong through all of these experiences. So I never let them, I mean, it flashed in my head, oh, this could be a dangerous situation. But I walked right up to the man, said hello, and he smiled and said hello and walked away. It wasn't a big deal. Another time a man was right behind me, I was going to a store, and he was very close. And I was about to turn around and hit him because I thought he was going to do something. I turned around and confronted him, and he just said, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. And I really believed him, and I, I then had a short conversation with him, and he was a nice man. Another time, I was just kind of sitting out in nature taking a hike when this wild car came running through, went around a barricade, and I just thought, what an idiot, what an idiot. We had to turn around and come back, and I'm just sitting in the grass, and he stops his car, and he's like, F you, and I'm like, whoa. I don't even know this guy, and like I'm not sending any bad energy, or was I? I don't know, but those things were happening at the same time. Um, also, around when all this started happening, I started getting new videos, and in my algorithm, and they were ascension videos, and they were telling me, "Oh, your body's changing. This is happening, and this is happening," and it was happening. So, I then started watching all kinds of videos, but they weren't all true. And it was, it's, it's been very hard, and uh, it's still a little difficult to discern what's true and what isn't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anyone who uh, is convinced easily 
to jump into these alien type of things because they can be very confusing. There's very subtle things and differences um, that you really have to pay attention inside what's going on to decide whether it's for you or not. Certainly, if it sounds good, doesn't mean that it's, it's good, you know? Um, and finally, I contacted someone. I can't remember if I found them or if I just got an email. And you might say, what, you got an email? Yeah, I, get, I started getting uh, contacts with all kinds of different people. But this was a psychic. And it's very interesting, because he was like a generic, cheesy psychic, you know? Like, um, no one you would consider, oh, this, this man's impressive. There's a picture, I figured it was fake. Uh, I thought it might be an algorithm, but he suggested, and he said that I have important things to do. Now, I still don't know if that's true, by the way, important things. But he said I should start doing tarot. He had diet recommendations, and because I was having you know, abdominal pain and problems, I was really looking for solutions. Since the doctors weren't giving them, I'd been te several tests had been done, ultrasounds. Um, and I think, ultimately, what I've decided is I had a blocked chakra, and it was the uh, sacral, right? This is why I was so scared and anxiety-filled is because of the energy wasn't flowing in me. Um, but no doctor would tell me that. But he sent me megahertz, and I started listening to it, and it did amazing things. And at times I stopped because I could feel it. You know, it's almost like a magnetic experience or that new parts of your brain are being ignited. It was very exciting. At the same time, I was like, uh, is this good for me? Um, I've since decided that it is, although... Uh, I don't do it all the time. I think it's like exercise. It like frees up parts of your mind. I, I recommend it if you're, if you're really on a spiritual journey. Just trying things. Um, this is what he told me. He just, do new things. Try new things. And uh, that was probably his most valuable piece of advice. Besides clearing up my abdominal pain with this megahertz, which was brilliant, um, I started doing new things. I went to a church just to try it. I mean, it, I wasn't feeling good about it. I applied at some counseling job where I totally got it wrong. The guy probably thought I was nuts. And I um, got on Tinder. I don't have a lot of people. I don't have family. To talk. So during the pandemic, it's not like uh, I had people to reach out to or talk to. So right when I was about to give up on Tinder, I met a girl. Um, and we just hit it off and started talking all the time. She was a writer and we would chat for hours and hours a day. Now this really helped me. One of the interesting things about her though, when I um, told her about the drones and um, what was kind of going on, she would suggest therapy. And I kept telling her, you know, when you suggest therapy, you're saying that you don't believe me. And she's like, no, no, it's just good for everyone to have therapy, you know. And I wouldn't be surprised to this day if she would, um, suggest therapy with some of the things that I experienced. But that's besides the point. I, I didn't let her bother me. It was as if I knew her um, already. And I knew her behaviors, and uh, she didn't affect me uh, negatively. But she talked to me a lot, and that's what I really needed. Um, to this day, even if things didn't work out, um, there was still value in that. It's what I needed. It's what I needed. And she's a magic practitioner, so... You would think that she would be more open-minded, but her magic came in handy later, but she wasn't necessarily open-minded, especially to uh, aliens um, and UFOs. But she listened. Also, one of the things I started doing in my meditation automatically was using this energy and it was green. And I was doing things with it. Um, I was sending it out in the world uh, all kinds of creative things, putting it around the world, sending it to people. And I had uh, no idea what it was until one night, because these drones were always outside, they were always flying around, I started using this green energy in my meditation to put bubbles up around the house. And I thought, well, what does that really mean? Until I went outside and the drones were actually outside of the bubble. Then I would do a bigger one, like I'll cover two or three blocks. And they would be out that far or way high up. And this was amazing to me. I was like, really? I have energy that can affect the physical world from a meditation point of view? I know this sounds weird to people, but this was happening. Um, Julia and I, on our second date, I think, went on a hike. And uh, she stepped in a, in a shallow little hole. 
and hit the ground and I thought, oh, you just sprained your ankle. Um, you'll be okay, whatever, but she couldn't get up. Um, speaking of mushrooms earlier, she was on mushrooms, so I think that kind of helped. But I stayed with her and an ambulance came and, uh, you know, she ended up with like two, two rods sticking out of her leg, broke her ankle bad. Um, she told me a little bit later that she had been doing rituals to meet the love of her life and so that they could heal together. Now, I don't know if the two are connected, but it was an awfully strange situation, especially as uh, I ended up um, taking care of her. But at that point, um, you know, more strangeness. And I fell for her. But one of the things I started to do in my meditation was use this green energy to help her because she was really struggling, uh, really struggling with the pain. You know, she had the rod sticking out of her leg. Um, she ended up at her parents' house. I tried to take care of her, but I realized it was a full-time job and uh, it would be best to go to her parents, a place that uh, she wasn't excited about. But in my meditations, I kept sending her this energy. Um, and then I, I eventually told her about it. And she said, oh, that's Reiki. And I had no idea what Reiki is. So I started looking it up. I looked it up and started discovering you know, practices and symbols that you could use. And uh, then one day, I just naively, basically, used this symbol. And she was having a real problem. She couldn't have, she wasn't breaking through um, this kind of ceiling of suffering, and she was never going to get better. She couldn't take it, and really struggling. She wouldn't listen to anyone. So I went, and I was going there, and actually she was coming, however, but we would walk around, we would talk. Uh, I put a light in her room for healing. Um, I did all kinds of things. And I think it was helping her because she would say, uh, right afterwards, or that she was feeling better. But when she was really struggling one night, I think she ate too many edibles. And, but I use these symbols for, in Reiki that you can use and take to people. And some people might say, oh, that was stupid. But I was really doing it uh, to help her. I went and I used this symbol on her and in my meditation, and that was all. It was a few minutes later, I got a phone call from her and said, it said, um, oh my God, I just had a, a death experience. Some voice came to me and said, you're dying. Uh, and I freaked out, and, da -da. and it took me a while to tell her what I was doing. And I'm not going to take, um, I'm not going to say like I did something amazing. I just find it interesting that this happened at the same time as I went there and used the symbol on her. But what ended up happening for her is she broke through um, that struggle and that inability to look past, you know, her pain and her suffering. And uh, that was really profound. She says it's a near-death experience. Um, she's not one, much, one for giving credit to other people, so I don't know if that's what happened or not. But I told her I wouldn't do that anymore, and I stopped. I didn't go any further. I figured it could be dangerous. I don't know. But in the long view, I think it helped her. And that's pretty cool. Um, I also kind of came to the understanding that fear, the fear that I had been feeling, was outside of me. I looked at it as if it was being projected at me, as if uh, it was like a signal being sent to me. It wasn't a part of me, and it no longer bothered me. Whether that's true or not, or that fear is used by entities, or is some sort of power that can affect people, I don't know. But it really relieved my anxiety, and yeah. So these, these aren't in a direct order, but they all kind of happened at the same time. Um, the thing in my room was still there and I was seeing it and I became curious about it. Um, it wasn't always there, but... so I started recording my meditations and I had this app, I guess you call it, and it would count down three, two, one, then record, but it would go through different frequencies. And it would get stuck on a frequency, like at two, and you, you wouldn't be able to really hear the sound like you were trying to record your voice and play it back. But I just thought, oh, well, they use these on uh, ghost sessions. They use different frequencies. So maybe I'll just do it and uh, meditate. And I recorded one. And um, when I listened back, these things did not happen while I was meditating. 
I could hear things being moved around, like shifting. And then very faintly, I could hear what I thought was communication. Now this is a key point in all this. It wasn't a language. And it wasn't like, oh, this is aliens talking. It was screeching, like wailing animals, like the depths of hell screeching. Um, I don't know if I still have it. It really got me freaked out. But this is a big turning point, and uh, that's enough. I think 15 minutes is enough for anybody, especially looking at me. But um, part three is coming up, hopefully coming soon, and I'll see you then.